the values of happens after d4, d5, and knight c3. Now we have to play knight f6, and there's uh, plenty of lines now. The most active seems to be with bishop g5, but the, we will also eventually go through bishop f4 and e3, which is a little bit more passive. After bishop g5, the goal of the white player is to take the knight and, the, and uh, start breaking the pawn structure of the black player. So we keep it like this. We we keep it safe through knight b to d7. And so if the bishop takes, we can take back the knight. Right now, there's absolutely no reason for white to take our knight. And if he does, then it's just good for black. After this move, now the theory goes on with e4. So we're going to take that pawn with the knight. And we're attacking the bishop. So knight cannot take a pawn back in d5, for example, because then we will be taking the bishop. So after the knight takes, we take back. And now let's go through this move. Right, because we gotta start somewhere, so let's start from f3. f3 is a typically played move. The idea is that if we take, that's not really good for black because then knight takes back and uh, we are pawn up, but we have zero development. And wh whereas white is in is just amazing, he's got uh, the bishop is releasable, this bishop is already being released, queen's open, the knight is already well placed in f3, and after castling, white's got so many ch attacking chances. So now we're just gonna play. Knight to f6, and we're protecting this square, so we could take back in case the pawn takes us. So now white can go for his plan, which is basically bishop takes knight. So let, let's go through that. Bishop takes knight, we take with the e pawn, because this allows development of both bishops. And now we're just doing fine. Now the thing is that we are a pawn up, and white doesn't have compensation for that, because we have the same ease in developing pieces. So white is not ahead right now at all, and our idea now would be to play f5. We would love to play f5 now and just reinforce the control of the center, also allow the queen out to a very dangerous diagonal. And so if if white plays like bishop c4, just to make an example, we will still play f5. And we're just better here, right, according to the, the position and the evaluation of the engine. Nothing's going to stop us from castling soon, and we got the, the bishop pair. So white can now think of taking the pawn back. But we're still going to play f5. And the idea is to take the pawn. So now white, white's best move is to take the pawn. And we're going to go through that. First, let's quickly mention how wrong things can go if white plays something else. Like knight f3, we could take the pawn with an attack on the knight. So that's really uh, wrong. Queen f3, uh, we could just take this pawn. There's no compensation whatsoever for white. Uh, we're just winning more and more. So the best move is pawn takes. But let's, see, let's see e5, right? Let's just quickly mention this very typical pattern that we are probably all aware of is queen check now making the usual uh, attack we're going to e4 so g3 will lose the rook and king e2 is met by bishop e6 the idea of playing bishop c4 with a deadly attack can be stopped at the, for the moment by b3 but we're gonna play g5 our idea is the castle long side and go for this pawn in d4 so if we get to play again, pawn, uh, rook, rook attacking d4, a move like c3 is met by c5, we're going to open the lines, it's inevitable. The king is in the center, and all, and we have the bishop pair, two rooks ready to join the game soon. So, so let's look what happens after knight f3, we're going to play queen to h5, because the knight's attacking the queen. Our goal here will be to play g4, it would be amazing if we could play g4 right now, we'd be winning immediately because of the following discovered check. And well, everything depends on uh, what, what what would white do. But still, g4 will be winning, absolutely winning right now. So what's the best move by white? It's h4. The idea is to create space in h2 so that after g4, the knight can go to h2. And so g4, knight h2, and then we don't really have that discovered check because we can play this move. And the pawn in h2 is not falling. And after that, h4 also provides the knight not right now because it's pinned, but the knight of a potential g5 idea. So after h4, we castle alongside, we carry on with the plan also because the pawn is pinned. Can't really take the other pawn because otherwise we will win the rook. White's best move now is queen to d2, but let's look at, let's try to understand what's wrong with this position for the white player. The main thing, it's basically the lack of possibility to develop this bishop in f1 and the king is misplaced. So in a position like this, with the, with the, we also have the bishop pair. If we play very accurately, white will not be able to develop the bishop any time. So now after queen d2, best move, going clearly for this g5 spot, we're going to push the pawn. And then after the knight moves to h2, we, we can now clearly also understand the reason why we pushed, one of the reasons why we pushed the g5 pawn before was because 
the, the, the dark squares here are controlled by the, the white pawns and bishop b4, move like bishop b4 before wouldn't work also because of the potential c3 move. So that th this is not the ideal diagonal. The bishop will go this way, attacking the queen. And now the, the following move, which of course I don't claim it to be remembered because we are a few moves away from the, from the theory here. But the next move is f6, which is there to prove a point. The point is the king is in the center. We're going to apply the principles of chess. King in the center, swap the central pawns so that your rooks and queen and bishops can become even more active. And so after taking this pawn, we'll, we'll be completely winning. If pawn takes us, for instance, we can take the pawn in h4. And yeah, if uh, I'd be glad to know that if, if you're able to remember these moves, we know, we're know probably like a move... 12 or 13 or something right now so yeah the advantage is like something like minus six and everything that went wrong was right from the opening so the game was compromised we're going to look now at a more serious approach of the white player uh, even more accurate one to see how we should be fighting this opening so we're looking at bishop g5 variation first of all right knight b7 knight d7 and then e4 we can take it knight takes pawn takes and now f3 some sort of gambit which we don't accept because we play knight f6. After bishop takes and pawn takes, as we mentioned right now, our goal is to play f5. And there's no compensation whatsoever for, for white. And also we have this threat of the dangerous diagonal. So white takes the pawn, best move. And after f5, best move by white is to take the pawn. So e5 was the blunder I showed before. And now we still go to h4 anyway for one reason. We're going to try to weaken the light squares of our opponent, um, trying to force move like g3, for example. Otherwise, well, then white king will have to move, and this is, it, it looks like a suicide. So, for example, after king e2, we could take this pawn, and we have a plan of rook, uh, of castling, and then the rook in d8 will be putting pressure on the d4 square together with the queen. And then, if that provokes a move like c3, then clearly this creates an even stronger bishop for us. So after bishop to f5, a move like knight to f3 is met by queen to f6, and we have accomplished what we wanted. We still have the bishop pair. We're equal in pawns, but we can castle, whereas white cannot. And also this bishop f1 here will be is being punished way too much. The goal here is the same. We're going to be castling long side. So after a move like queen f6, and let's say white wants to maybe play f2, king f2, to develop the bishop and then play the rook in some sort of manual castling. Then we will play castle. We have two pieces attacking the point d4, but white has two pieces defending it. So white doesn't have to worry, doesn't have to play a move like c3. It can play bishop e2 with the same idea of castling, uh, somehow castling. And now the crushing move is g5, because we're threatening to attack the knight. The knight will have to move away, and we will have a very strong discover check with the bishop. So white does not make it in time to move the rook and then do the castling thing because of that. So a move like h3, for example, try, trying to stop this idea is met by h5. So now after h5, it's white to move. White's best move is queen to d2 in order to put more attack on the g5 square and, what, and black's best is rook to g8. And the plan of g4 is now stronger than before and there's nothing stopping us from carrying it on. The knight will be forced away from f3. We're gonna have more attack on d4. We could take we could take with the rook with an attack on the queen. The bishop will be will be good to go soon, and we're gonna leave it here. So let's go back a few moves. So here again, pawn takes, and then we play f5, and the best move is pawn takes. So uh, we're gonna play queen h4 anyway. Earlier, the previous line we we went through king moving to e2, and I think it's pointless to go through king moving to d uh, to d2 because we definitely don't need to go through such moves. I mean, black is going to be up too much material. We can take the pawn with check and we carry on with the bishop pair. So let's let's look at it. Queen takes and then after king moves, we're going to swap queens. And king moves back. And then we can take in f5 and we got the bishop pair, pawn up and the possibility to castle immediately. Another example of the queen takes, the king goes to maybe e1 with the idea that if we take the queen, then the rook can take us and then white can get some sort of development, then that's even worse because queen takes b2, wins a pawn, we can take even some more pawns if the rook moves. There's no compensation for, for white. White doesn't have any checks or any threatening checks, and we're also threatening queen to c3. So for example, knight f3, we can play queen to c3. Queen can't move because otherwise we win the rook. If knight moves, that it's pinning himself, and we're going to be playing bishop f5, 
the idea of castling long side and there's too much pressure also material advantage better position in each initiative so we can look at another quick variation of this like what happens after bishop to d3 protecting the pawn developing the bishop still i mean let's just remember that the white player can't even castle he's lost his right to castle now we're going to play bishop to d6 and then castling short side and get the rooks to play the advantage here is over like two p considered like over two pieces 